Hello everyone, welcome back to The Plunder Den. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to focus on the sails. Uh, so, uh, originally I was going to do the sails and the flags in this episode, but uh, I think I'm going to do it in two separate episodes. I think uh, both of those topics warrant uh, uh, exploring a little further. Uh, and the galleon has lots of sails and flags, so lots to cover. Uh, so we decided to do some uh, one decorative sail, and uh, so I'll show you kind of where we finished off. Um, and it's getting harder and harder to put this into the screen <laughs> as we add more things to it. Uh, but the galleon, I'm going to try to show you in here. Um, so now we've added sails. So I'm going to move back a little bit here so you guys can see it. Um, now I didn't get uh, to do finish this one here. I wanted to add another sail in there. Uh, but I'll have to do that uh, on my own. But uh, I think uh, I've covered the concept of making it. All the other sails were created, and, and I uh, and we show you the steps to making a decorative sail, um, like this one on here. Uh, so how I make those kind of sails. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Uh, remember, after I complete the sails and flags video. I'll probably do the battle report in between, uh, between the galleon and the six rate, uh, just because I want to coincide uh, more with the uh, uh, we have the world campaign going on for blood and plunder, and and I kind of wanted to uh, get that last battle report in uh, before the end of uh, the campaign. So it ends on the the tenth of September. So I I, I figured I'd get that uh, that final battle in the epic final battle between. Uh, <laughs> The six raid frigate and the uh, galleon. Uh, Old Juan is going to be back. <laughs> I think he wants a rematch. Uh, he had a smaller ship. He only had a Tartana on the last uh, last battle report, and now he's uh, upgraded up to a galleon. Uh, and let's see if he can defeat uh, the uh, the English uh, in the six rate. So that's uh, something to look forward to. Hopefully, I'll get that filmed up. Uh, hopefully, this weekend, and maybe I'll get it out by Tuesday. Uh, a little bit late this week, uh, some stuff, uh, other commitments outside of uh, this, obviously. <laughs> uh, and uh, wasn't able to get it out on Tuesday, but I'll get it out to uh, this episode, uh, I mean the uh, battle report out uh, next week as, as soon as I can. Uh, definitely before the 10th. We're going to have it out before the uh, end of the campaign. So uh, so if you guys like uh, what's going on here on the Plunder Den, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get... Uh, uh, first-hand information of when I post uh, my new projects and, and what I'm working on. All right, everyone, let's go down to the table and uh, let's see uh, what we're doing here on making these sales. Okay, this is how I usually start on my sails, and definitely with the uh, galleon, uh, I definitely wanted to measure them all out. I used some cardstock, as you can see here, uh, just packages of, of cardboard here, and then I just kind of made a uh, how many sails I'm going to need to make, and I cut the shape out, uh, and I kind of uh, how I measure it is I just kind of look at the boat. Uh, sometimes when you put your masts together, uh, they're not sometimes equal amounts uh, distance apart from each other. Um, so some of these uh, cards are actually from the six-rate frigate, which is very similar to the galleon. Uh, but some of them I had to measure out and uh, fit this customized into this ship. Um, so I'm just uh, showing you that I've checked them all out, uh, made sure everything fits nicely. Um, and just make sure it all uh, is is correct, uh, the correct dimensions and sizes. So uh, this is what I uh, usually use to trace it out onto this uh, fabric. So fabric creations, you can get this at Walmart, it's just pre-cut uh, fabric rarely. It's really uh, thin so you can, the craft paint uh, really takes well to it. So I'm just showing you that uh, I'm going to trace all those shapes onto the fabric. So you can see here, I've already traced all of my sails out. Uh, and just uh, just use the pencil and draw it right onto the into the fabric. I, like I was saying, I like this fabric because it's very thin. As you can see, you can see through it. So 
uh, it allows the craft paint to uh, uh, go through it um, when I put it on the ball. Uh, make sure when you cut them out, have a good set of uh, fabric scissors. Um, don't use the uh, cheap scissors, you'll just tear the fabric. Make sure you have good fabric scissors. Alright, so we've got them all cut out. Just so you can see, I have them all laid out. Don't worry about the crease and stuff. Um, when we put it on to uh, the ball and put the paint on, it'll take all those out and iron that all out. All right, so this is what I usually use, vintage white. That's uh, kind of an off-white. That's uh, what I uh, put down on all my sails first. Uh, it's a multi-surface craft paint, so it hardens, and that's what you want. <clears throat> So here's a little children's ball that I'm using right here. <laughs> For the galleon, I actually used a couple of balls. <laughs> so really, I'm just showing you here. Uh, I just put the sail on there. Uh, it takes that uh, vintage white, uh, and I'm just going to smear it over top uh, onto the ball. And why I'm doing this is uh, I want to have the round shape. I want to have like a billowed sail, like there's wind in it. Um, some people want it straight, flat, uh, that's really a personal preference, uh, I just like it this way, so I put it on a, on a ball. Uh, you could put these sails on a plastic lid and just, uh, paint it that way, uh, if you wanted them just flat or straight, um, but I, I like to have a little bit of a bulge to them, like they're, they're catching the wind. So, I use these, uh, children's balls. Uh, the children's ball is, uh, you know, it's, it's got a plastic surface, uh, and that's important uh, because when this dries, uh, it's going to stick to it, right? Uh, with these little uh, plastic balls like this, it's easy to peel it off. Um, I've tried uh, using, uh, I made the error one time of trying to use glass, uh, and that's a, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> uh, it, it sticks to the glass and you can't get it off. Um, uh, so a plastic tote lid is usually what I use for my flag. And when I was constructing uh, the sloop uh, or the brigantine, the big back, the big um, sail on the back, uh, I'll usually uh, paint it uh, flat onto a plastic tote lid. Uh, but uh, in the galleon, there's a there's one flat sail, but most of them are uh, are going to be these rounded sails. So I do have, like I mentioned, I have several balls that I'm going to put these on, so I can do them all at once. Otherwise, uh, you know, I could probably get three or four sales per ball. Um, now, these balls are good. They're, you know, they're five or six bucks at Walmart or, or a dollar store. Um, I usually can get, uh, you know, quite a few sales, almost, uh, you know, 30 to 40 maybe sales out of it before. Uh, once you start gooping it up too many times and it starts sticking to the other, you know, the old uh, paint that's on there. I mean, you guess you could clean them between each use. Uh, but you know, <laughs> it's a lot of work, but you could, uh, and then use it longer. So I'm going to use this desert yellow. Uh, this seems kind of odd that it would be going to a desert yellow right now. Uh, but, uh, really what I'm trying to do here is, uh, and I'm just going to show you real quickly. I've done some already in advance. I'm going to try to create lines in the sail so it looks like it's been sewn together and, but not actually having to sew it together. Uh, I'm just going to paint it. Uh, and I'm going to cover this uh, with uh, with some white paint. It also gives it kind of a you know weathered look. Uh, there's a darker undertone in there, um, so I'll add this uh, desert yellow on there. It's you know you could use other colors. Uh, I I just find that this one uh, seems to take well when you put white over top of it, and uh, just gives me the nice uh, uh, feeling that the that the the sail has been sewn together. So I'm just uh, finishing that up, and uh, we'll go on to the uh, the next step, uh, which is uh, putting the uh, the white uh, paint over top. We're going to put a titanium white. All right, so that's the titanium I was talking about, uh, full cart, multi-surface paint. And again, just similar to those other uh, craft builds, uh, you keep putting craft paint on it, it just gets harder and harder. Uh, so... It seems like we just did all this line work. <laughs> We're going to cover it. So there's a completed one. Well, actually, I've done, I need to do one more layer of white on it. But you can see what I'm getting at. Once you put that white on there, it kind of, you can still see the lines. 
the white is not uh, totally uh, solid, so it's a uh, little transparent. You can still see those lines underneath. It's what you, you know, it's what you want. So it, it looks like there's a, a sewed look to the sail. So I'm just showing you really quickly uh, how I do it. Now, when, when you cover this uh, the first time, uh, uh, I would let it all dry. Uh, and then I would come back and, and hit it again. Uh, I like to do, like I said, multiple layers of craft paint. It, not only is it more sturdy and it holds its shape uh, because it hardens that way, um, but it also is easier to pull off the ball. So the more weight you have on the top, um, because that first layer of craft paint you would have put on would have gone right into the ball. Uh, and uh, it's mostly sitting on there, not too much on the fabric. So once it dries and hardens, then you put on the next layer on top of that. Uh, and then I usually let that dry and I put another layer. So you essentially you got a vintage white, you got your lines, and then two coats of white. Uh, and then your sail should be good to, uh, to peel off that ball. All right, so we're going to move on to the uh, next step here. Okay, so I've taken all the, uh, peeled them all off the ball here. I'm just showing you that I, you know, this is kind of what it looks like after you're done with it. And you can still uh, put sails over top of that for a while, uh, and they'll still peel off nicely. So I'm just showing you all the uh, sails that completed. So you can see I got that little bit of a line effect underneath. Uh, in the back, I'll keep it that way. Uh, I'm just showing you the uh, corners. So the corners are... Uh, usually tend to, uh, and you know, this is a recent discovery of mine, <laughs> that they tend to curl a little bit. Uh, so what I've done to to mitigate that is uh, I went back in with some vintage uh, white again and painted the corners, and then it hardens uh, straight like that. I'm just showing you an example of one finished. All right, so now I'm going to go to my trusty uh, hot glue gun. Now, you guys don't have to use a hot glue gun. Uh, some people can sew. You can sew these on, right? They're, it's fabric, uh, and it's hard, and you just use a sewing needle, and you can sew them on. Uh, I have done that on my sloop. Um, but, uh, frankly, uh, I'm not, uh, <laughs> I don't have the patience for sewing them on. Uh, I, frankly, just glue them on. I've contemplated doing magnets at one point, uh, just magnetizing it, but uh, hot glue is the easiest way. Just glue it on. Um, that's how I do mine. Uh, again, if you want to take that extra step of detail, then I suggest that maybe you uh, sew them on. Uh, but again, in, in, it is fabric, so you can sew it on there. So I'm just showing you. I'm going to hear all those on. I've uh, glued these all on, so the back uh, sail and all the top smaller sails and the very front of the boat. I've completed all those. So now we're going to pick some of these mid-sails. I want to do the decorative designs on these ones. So we're not going to stick those on right away. Uh, we're going to do a design on one of these. So that's the design I picked. Uh, I went all over the internet looking for Spanish symbols, 17th century. Uh, and that's one of the uh, designs that I came across. And I think I like it. So I think I'm going to take that one. Uh, and uh, we're going to put that on. So what I'm showing you here, this is uh, an H pencil. So it has, uh, H is a, is a designation, it's a harder lead. Um, so you know you got an HB, that's your standard pencil, uh, but H is a harder lead on it, uh, which, you know, make a lighter line. So we're gonna draw it right on the sail. And we're gonna draw that design. Uh, so usually I put this square pattern on here first. And why I do that is just to measure where the middle of the sail is. So when I draw this on, I kind of have little boxes that I can draw in. So I, I kind of don't go off the beaten path and I go too far to one side or to the top. And that way you stay centered with your design. So and really I just draw it on. Draw it on with that light pencil first. Uh, and then I go back in and add this, these darker lines. So really I just used uh, uh, a couple different types of uh, Sharpie markers actually. Here, I'll show you in a minute here. So yeah, so just, you know, a fine tip sharp, uh, Sharpie marker. I have one thick line and one thin line. Uh, and when I'm happy with the placement and the way it looks with the light pencil, I will go in and fill it in with, uh, with the marker. Uh, and then uh, 
what I'm going to do afterwards is erase all the lines. So once you've marked it with all the marker, and I'm happy with where everything is, I will erase all the pencil afterwards. Now, because you use that light pencil, it erases nice and easily. All right, we're going to add this dragon red. Uh, and this is the color I want to paint. Uh, I'm going to do a two-tone, which matches the rest of the boat. So we went with the dragon red for a lot of that. And I like to carry those color schemes right into the sails as well. So I'm just going to briefly show you. I'm not going to paint the whole thing for you guys. I'm just going to show you, you know, just going to plan on painting the whole thing that dragon red. Uh, and uh, when I did this, I actually did it uh, in two layers. I painted it once, and then I went back and painted it again. Um, you just have to paint it quite a bit of time. You don't want any white kind of or faded looking red. You want it to be a nice solid red like this. Uh, so, and now I want to add uh, shading to it. So we'll go back to my pure red. So to match the rest of the boat, the fighting tops, uh, the bottoms, the uh, balcony, we're going to go with the same colors and carry it up into the sails. And we're going to highlight this sail uh, and add a little of that, uh, you know, on his belly and on his backside and on his legs and just kind of add some uh, highlights to this uh, sail and really make it uh, pop so it stands out uh, on the game table. Now, I only was had time to do this one. Uh, I do plan on doing one more decorative sail on this Spanish galleon, uh, but we we're uh, running out of time, and I wanted to do the battle report before the end of the uh, uh, world campaign. Uh, I want to get that filmed. So I'm only doing the one, but the concept will be the same for the next sail as well. So this is kind of completed. I've shown you I've done painting it. And you got a little bit of highlight in there. It's really got it popped. So I got two other big sails. One I plan on gluing on. And the other one I plan on doing this design. So this is another Spanish design. Uh, and I plan on doing that on the large sail in the center. So I haven't done that yet, uh, but will. Uh, unfortunately not in this video. But uh, it's, it's the concepts will be the same. I'll make it exactly the same as that one. All right, so this is a finished uh, look uh, where we got so far. Obviously, we don't have the flags on there quite yet, and uh, we don't have that last sail, um, but uh, the rest of the ship is completed. Uh, somebody suggested that uh, I put a, a you know side-by-side -side with the Tartana, which is also part of the Spanish fleet. Uh, I remember I put those little jewelry embellishments on the side there uh, from Michael's, the cross, I uh, kind of wanted uh, all my Spanish ships are going to have that, uh, like that iron cross on the ship. So you can see it's on the galleon there as well. Just kind of puts the whole fleet together. I hope you found this uh, video useful and uh, hit the like button if you liked it. Uh, and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information on when I need to do projects. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching.